What's up everybody? Noah Lyles here and it is Friday, April 19th. We are 98 days out from Paris Olympics. Super exciting. Well, Noah Lyles has always been vocal about his feelings and thoughts, as well as his goals. He has expressed his intent countless times too. So it is not surprising to find out that he is excited for Paris and is training hard for it. So far, his intensive training sessions are working out well for him. Truth be told, it really should. Especially since all eyes are on six-time world champion Noah Lyles as the sprint star looks to show his form in a year he has stated he will go for four gold medals at the Olympic Games Paris 2024. On that note, Lyle seems to be working double time to either win his target number of gold medals or surpass Bolt's record, or both. He appears to be off to a great start as he crushed his personal best in the 60 meter to open the Olympic year in earnest, as he ran a personal best time in the 60 meter at the 2023 New Balance Indoor Grand Prix in Boston with 6.51 seconds. My confidence has now skyrocketed. Let's go get a world indoor medal, exclaimed Lyles. Truly though, whose confidence won't soar if he not only surpassed his own personal record, but also eclipsed Maurice Green's meet record from a quarter of a century ago. He is now tied for seventh fastest in American history in the shortest sprint. I didn't know I was in that good shape, Lyle said after beating the Jamaican Akeem Blake by .01 seconds. World lead meet record. Now let's go out there and get a world indoor medal in Glasgow. After smashing his own numbers from last year's New Balance Indoor Grand Prix and defending his title like a pro, Noah Lyles declared, We are coming after everything. A few days later, Noah Lyles won the men's 60-meter showdown with Christian Coleman in a world lead and personal best of 6.43. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, Lyles took the tape over the race's three-time winner and world record holder Coleman by 0.01. Then, on the first day of the World Athletics Indoor Championships, Coleman secured gold in the 60-meter race. The 27-year-old athlete, who holds a world record in the event, finished the race with a world-leading time of 6.41 seconds. Lyles, on the other hand, clinched silver on the tracks by Glasgow by clocking a time of 6.44. Lyles was followed by Jamaican runner Akeem Blake in 6.46, while Team Kenya's Ferdinand Omonyala failed to reach the podium. Despite this, Lyles was not too disappointed with a silver medal given he is better over longer distances and had just run the second fastest time of his life. Shoot, what an amazing indoor season, he said. They say I wasn't a 60 guy, but look at me now. If I'm beating these guys in the 60 meters, they've really got no chance in the outdoors. He insisted that despite the result, he wasn't afraid of Coleman when they were to race again at this summer's Olympics. I'm never afraid, he said. I'm always excited. I've increased the worst part of my race by drastic numbers, and I'm just ready to go back home and apply it to the 100 meter and 200 meter. By April, Noah Lyles made a winning start to his outdoor season at the Tom Jones Memorial Invitational in Gainesville, Florida. The meet featured the cream of college athletics talent, plus more established names taking part in Olympic development races. Running in the city of his birth, the 26-year-old edged out Olympic 200-meter silver medalist Kenny Bednarek to win the 100-meter in 10.01. Both men were awarded the same time, but Lyles crossed the line five thousandths of a second in front. Kyrie King ran 10.02 in third with Japan's Abdul Hakim Sunny Brown fourth in 10.04. Then in late April, Lyles had proven yet again why he is the reigning men's 100 meter and 200 meter world champion. At the USATF Bermuda Grand Prix, Lyles blitzed to victory in the men's 100 meters in gusting conditions. It was notably his second outdoor appearance of the season, stopping the clock in a wind dated time of 9.96 seconds. The American sprinter beat Canada's Aaron Brown to the line, with compatriot Pajai Austin rounding out the podium. In a tweet, Lyles wrote, It's only getting faster from here. A few days later, USATF confirmed that Lyles will run in the 4x100 meter relay at the World Athletics Relays alongside Olympic 200 meter silver medalist Kedney Bednarek and World 200 meter leader Courtney Lindsay who boast a blistering time of 19.71 seconds this year. 
Kyrie King was named as the final athlete, although the lineup was subject to change. As reigning world champions in the 4x100 meter, the U.S. was set to take on reigning Olympic champions Italy, who are led by Olympic 100 meter and 4x100 meter champion Marcel Jacobs. At the 2024 World Relays in the Bahamas, the USATF relay team had Courtney Lindsay, Kenny Bednarek, Kyrie King, and Noah Lyles as representatives. All of these athletes had the ability to perform and win gold, which they finally did. Lindsay got the entire team off to a fast start, followed by Bednarek, who raced around the field and threw the baton to King. The young athlete then sprinted perfectly through the race course before passing the baton to Lyles. The six-time world champion was already ahead of the field and maintained his form to the finish line. Lyles won gold for the relay team, which secured them a ticket to the Paris Olympics. Team USA was significantly quicker than the entire grid, clocking in at 37.49 seconds. The USATF is now confident in their athletes for the Olympics after defeating the strongest teams at the international event. Posting a clip of the race on his Instagram account, Lyles captioned the post, Who gonna stop us? However, it wasn't all rainbows and butterflies, as some say. On his ex-profile, Lyles has opened up about a few concerns that left him feeling exhausted following the event, which has worried his supporters. He began his lengthy statement by thanking the Bahamas for hosting such a wonderful event. Lyles enjoyed how the entire environment contributed to the athlete's feeling of excitement and welcome for the track competition. However, the track star apologized to his fans and attendants for failing to live up to the environment. This mental exhaustion was caused by a lack of boundaries during their warm-up exercises rather than by the races he ran. The conditions were so bad that he couldn't find individuals he wanted to interact with. Lyles again apologizes to his fans with an open confession, writing, The saddest part about this is that it left me so drained that I had no energy after my race to approach fans with a smile and give them the energy I normally give. A lot of people were quick to empathize, pointing to the fact that it is important for everyone, including track officials, to ensure athletes' mental and physical welfare. Hopefully this won't happen again, especially since the Paris Olympics is fast approaching and athletes really need to be physically and mentally prepared in a race. As most of you know, Lyles, who specializes in the 100 and 200 meters, would like to compete in the two short sprints in addition to the 4x100 and 4x400 meter relays at the Paris Olympics. That's right, I want to do all that, he said in an interview in early March. When I achieved the treble in Budapest, I was very shocked at how my body held up. Every time I go to athletics competitions, I ask myself, how many races can I participate in? If my body holds up and I'm in the right mental space, I can do a sub-44 or even sub-43 second relay in the 4x400 meter. Needless to say, the 26-year-old Lyles will be looking to find some positive momentum ahead of Paris 2024, where he could potentially be going for four podium places in the two individual short sprint events and the 4x100m and 4x400m relays. We're going to keep an eye on him for sure. Meanwhile, watch this to see who else aims to compete in Paris.